amphibians and tadpoles and salamanders as a child. I went camping a lot um, in central Illinois and would just spend hours pond side watching tadpoles, watching frogs hopping in, trying to catch frogs, trying to observe them, trying to see what's making that sound. Um, so from a really young age, I've been fascinated by amphibians. Uh, my favorite interaction with amphibians when I was a kid, I used to go uh, down to creeks and fight tadpoles all the time, hunt frogs in the summertime. That was, that's where I first got introduced to amphibians and really started to just enjoy and find out how cool animals they really were. And then being able to work with the collection we have now is, is kind, of, kind of the cherry on top, being uh, animals from all over the world and seeing that huge diversity is fantastic. I've been asked several times what my favorite amphibian is, and it changes day to day. But one of my favorites this week is the lesser siren. It's an Illinois species. Uh, most people, most residents of Illinois, even if they've lived in the state their whole lives, don't know that it exists. They've never heard of it, let alone seen it. We will be able to show them what this animal looks like. It's actually um, a really unique salamander. It lives entirely in the water, and it only has front legs. It's missing its back legs has external gills, and looks kind of like an eel. Amphibians play a really important part of the ecosystem. They are a species that indicates whether the natural area is healthy. Amphibians are kind of a keystone to how the water environment is doing because they're so closely linked to it. If there are no amphibians in the area, odds are you have polluted water, and that's a really big red flag for us to try and intervene and protect that area and make it better. Healthy water is really important for people, so if we protect frog habitat and protect healthy water, we protect ourselves. You know, I don't know if I have a favorite amphibian. There's just so many different animals that are very cool adaptation-wise. You've got the colorful dark frogs, you've got the giant Japanese salamander, an animal that's four foot long, weighs about 30 pounds. Uh, people think of little tiny salamanders, little tiny frogs. They don't realize there's some out there that are just monstrous. What people think of amphibians are mostly what they see, and you don't see a lot of these amphibians. Around here, there's probably, I think, about 40 in the state of Illinois. The main one people know about are bullfrogs. You hear them in the ponds around here, but there are thousands and thousands of others things you'd never see, never heard before, like a fuma that live in swampy areas. Many, many species are poisonous. Uh, when, you have, when you're near a brightly colored animal, like some of the dark frogs or some of the salamander species, if you're gonna stand out in nature, you better be able to defend yourself. They're not big, they're not aggressive, but if something wants to eat them, they're gonna get really sick and probably die. And animals learn that really quickly, what to avoid and what not to avoid. The Iberian newts are a really cool animal. They have an adaptation. If you look at them, they're not the most pretty animal. They're kind of a grayish, drab, brown color, but they have about seven or eight dots along the chest cavity. Um, it's an adaptation for defense. Uh, some animals are, venom are poisonous, some are not. This actually has poison sacs and those orange spots along its side, and if it gets attacked, it can literally break its ribs, poke those ribs through those poison sacs and stick out of its body. So if you're an animal, the first thing you're trying to do to another thing, animal, if you're a predator, is try and eat it. So you just put something in your mouth that has poison dip toothpicks sticking out of it. Uh, get a bad taste in your mouth, spit it out, and it can reabsorb those ribs through the holes, reattach them, and heal back up. It's kind of a last line of defense, but it's a very good last line. In general, I have been surprised that each species is so unique. They're found all across the globe in so many different habitats, and they all have their own unique story, and it's gonna be really exciting to share all of that with our guests.